Mason, we are talking Oregon Ducks football. All you Oregon Ducks fans, hey, how you doing? Welcome to the First and Long College Football Show. I'm Marcus. That's Mason. We are talking some Ducks football today, and we're so happy that you're here. Oregon Ducks came off an awesome year last year, Mason. Um, we're we're going to put um, some stats up here on the screen here. So that way we can, we can kind of take a look at this stuff. Uh, Mason, can you take that banner down? I'm sorry. Um, I, got it. I just went full screen, so I can't do it. Um, look, this was a great season, as I said, for Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks last year. Um, you, you get some continuity, I feel like, this year, get returning both of the coordinators, um, you know, uh, Will Stein and, and LaPoy uh, coming back on the offensive and, and defensive coordinator roles, respectively, there. Um, Oregon moving over to the Big Ten, it's going to be a bit of a clash of cultures. I feel like, and I'm super excited to see how that turns out. Um, I'm going to have a lot of, of Eastern teams headed out West and, and in Oregon's case, a Western team headed out way East uh, and, and some, some cold weather atmospheres. And, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch as the season goes on. But um, look, nobody's been more entertaining this off season. I feel like than the Oregon ducks, um, I feel like uh, that nobody's really made a, a splash quite like the Oregon Ducks have, especially in the transfer portal, um, and, but not limited to the transfer portal. Great recruiting going on as well, but um, the the acquisition of Jabbar, Jabbar Muhammad, and there were some Oregon fans who were a little concerned he didn't show up to those first couple of spring practices. Uh, I have gotten word that, that Evan Stewart and Jabbar Muhammad are now on campus and practicing. That's great news. Evan Stewart, uh, as we just said, wide receiver from Texas A&M, five-star guy. Could start on any team in the country. Okay, this is a, a very talented guy. Um, super excited to see him as well. Cam Alexander coming to play in the secondary on this defense. Point, uh, Mason, is there a spot on this Oregon Ducks team that that looks to be deficient to you? I, I don't really see any spot. Last year, my biggest concern was the defensive line. And, and the particularly the interior of the defensive line. It didn't seem like Oregon had that refrigerator-shaped man uh, to hold and hold blocks off the linebackers in certain situations. I thought Washington did a good job of, of taking advantage of that. And I think that was really uh, one of the very few chinks in the armor that uh, Oregon had as they took two losses to the Washington uh, Huskies last year and went on to absolutely trounce Liberty in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, what's your thoughts on this Oregon Ducks team? Um, I'm very excited to watch them play again this year, and I, I think Dan Lanning has got this team on the right track. He's even went as far as to say that, in some cases, uh, they are a well-oiled machine right now in spring. Uh, those are actual words from the coach's mouth. So um, I, I, Dan Lanning seems to be exuding some co some confidence to me. Um that that I feel like he would not be exuding if if he didn't have a good reason to do so. Yeah, I think as they enter the Big Ten and step up in competition, even, as good as the Pac-12 was last year, um, this is a different conference. <clears throat> They're going to step in and, and immediately be contenders. You know, I, I think that this team is poised. You mentioned it. Uh, you asked if there are any holes in this in this roster, and for the the starting twenty two, no, there aren't. Um, that there really aren't uh, maybe the kicker, you know, <laughs> maybe you look at kicker again, which they, which they, uh, brought in a transfer kicker as well. You know, I know that was an issue last year for them. Yes, it was. They bring in a, a transfer kicker anxious to see how that turns out. You know, it could go good or bad. You, you never know, but, um, but no, I mean, on offense and defense, I, I think that they are a very complete team. Um, I, I'm anxious to see kind of how this, this all unfolds one thing that's interesting though is this secondary all right on these five positions you've got a transfer player in cam alexander at uh, uh cornerback uh transfer player in kobe savage at safety a uh transfer player in jabbar muhammad which you mentioned at cornerback and a transfer player in brandon johnson at nickelback um and then also the guy that i think is going to end up being the free safety um, it is, or excuse me, the strong safety is, um, Aaron flowers. Who's going to be a true freshman, a very talented, true, true freshman, but, 
my point in saying this is you've got the potential to have five brand new starters on uh, the deep at the defensive backfield positions. And that has to be a little bit of a concern, not having all these guys coming in from other programs, not having played together. Can you get them all on the same page? Because that cohesion is very important on that back end. Um, and, and, and can they understand the defense, right? They're, they're the ones who are the eyes and ears. Um, the, the good thing is all, all of the transfer players are all, all seniors. So they've seen a lot of football, but they're the ones who are communicating up front to the linebackers and, and to the defensive line. So can they all get on the same page? So they know what they're doing. Um, by the end of the year, I think they will, but you know, maybe, maybe you're, you're looking at a few games early and, and wondering, um, you know, if, if they're going to be on the same page or not, I think the schedule sets up for them pretty nicely. Um, looking at this, yep. you know, I, I I wonder, I wonder how that Oregon State game is going to look. Uh, I wonder how that, excuse me, how the Oregon State team is going to look um, after they lose uh, Jonathan Smith to Michigan State. I I don't know that this is a as tough of an Oregon State team as we saw last year. I I, I highly doubt that it is. Um, UCLA, I think that they're going to be in a big transition year. Uh, by the way, Dante Moore left UCLA, comes to Oregon. So, you know, what do we, what, who kind of fills his spot right at UCLA? Um, I, I just don't think there's, there's that much of a roster left there at UCLA. And then the team we just talked about, Michigan State, you know, they're in a rebuilding year. So, um, I, I don't think we're going to expect much from them, especially in, on October 5th of, of this year. And then you got the big boy, Ohio State. Everybody stop what you're doing on October 12th and go watch this game, please, because this mm -hmm. is going to be an absolute heavyweight um, fight. You know, this is going to be a heavyweight bout, and I, I'm really excited to see what comes of this, right? Because this is going to give us a really good idea of um, where Oregon stands in the Big Ten and where Dan Lanning is as a coach where Ryan day is as a coach, right? He's got the hottest seat in college football right now. Ryan day does not because he's a bad coach, but because he's put a lot of pressure on himself, uh, based on what they've done in the transfer portal and recruiting. Um, it's warrant. It's a warranted hot seat, I think for, for Ryan day. So can he can, can Ryan day compete with, with Dan Lanning? Um, I would like to think based on the roster that they should be able to. But the other question for Dan Lanning is, can he win the big game against a really good coach? Because we saw him fall twice against Kalen DeBoer last year. Um, and, and really in his career so far, he's made some poor coaching decisions um, and really got out coached in, in a lot of their losses. So I think it's, it's fair to say to, to question if he's, if he's, um, getting better as a head coach, right? I think he yep. is. I really like, I, I really, really like Dan Lanning as a head coach. Um, excellent recruiter. And I think that he is going to get better. But at this point on October 12th of this year, we're going to see how much better he's gotten uh, as a head coach because th those are the games where those decisions really matter. Those in-game decisions from the head coach, from the players, from everybody, um, th they've got to be, They've got to be really sound to win those big games. Um, then you got Purdue, Illinois, a rebuilding Michigan team. Um, Maryland might be pretty good still. Wisconsin, I think, will be pretty good. Uh, and Washington, I, I think ten and a half points is too low. I, I don't see, I don't see a way that Oregon loses more than two games or or more than one game um, in this regular season. I think Ohio State's the only one that can really get up and get them. Um, I just. I'm really high on Oregon this year. I, I, I yeah. you know, I was last year too. I thought that they were going to win the Pac-12 last year, um, but Washington had a really good team and a lot of. Uh, I think what we're going to see is a really good first-round type talent for the for the NFL. And um, you know, sometimes that just happens. But this is the year I think that Oregon comes in and um, makes a statement in the big 10 and, and I'm, I'm anxious to see it. I'm anxious to hear what Oregon fans think uh, of their program. How bullish are you on your team this year? I know you step up in competition in, in a new conference, but what does that really mean to you? Right. Um, so let me know in the comment section 
kind of how you're feeling about this this upcoming year yeah yeah this this is a I I think a manageable schedule for the most part I mean you get your hardest game at home I I, that Wisconsin game uh yeah November 16th really sticks out to me you got to go to Madison in November um I think that's going to be a little bit of a shock uh for some of those guys that that you know it's going to be mighty cold and and make no mistake about it the luke fickle train has left the station buddy and um there there will be a packed house there to witness that one for sure um but a lot of these other ones seem you know very manageable oregon state was competing with teams they had no business competing against last year uh jonathan smith had that team competing at a level that um that they they probably had no business competing at and and i think that um We'll see over time that Jonathan Smith is the right guy at Michigan State, but Michigan State's not going to be good this year. That's they're not going to be very good this year. Um, you know, Ohio State is going to be very good. UCLA not very good. Um, Boise State, um, we'll see. Not great. They're not going to be a great team. Um, Illinois uh, win at Purdue. I think could be a little bit trickier than what people realize. Um, Coming off of a game against Ohio State, if there's a trap game on the schedule, Mason, it's at Purdue. Mm-hmm. And people don't realize the traction that Purdue had gotten this past offseason. And we're going to be talking about them a little bit more uh, as the, the offseason goes on. Um, I know there's probably no Boilermakers watching now, but um, just you heard it here first. Purdue has has been picking up talent, uh, people's leftovers, and – and uh, they're going to have a decent little team, I think, this year and the next couple of years. Washington's going to be down this year. Um, Michigan, I think, is going to be down this year. So that things are manageable. Um, we, I, I don't even think we mentioned Dylan Gabriel coming over to play quarterback. I think you see um, kind of like a, a Bo Nix situation. Uh, I, I think you're going to, I think you're going to see. I don't know that it'll have the same ex- numbers or better than Bo Nix from last year. But I, I think that it's going to be comparable, and I don't think that it's going to be all on his shoulders either. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of options on this offense to to propel this team, and and I think the outlook is really, really bright for the Oregon Ducks. Uh, let us know in the comment section what you think about your Ducks. Um, what's your prediction for the year? Wins, losses, all that good stuff. Uh, we'd love to hear it. We love conversing with you guys uh, and appreciate you guys watching the channel. I know there's uh, Oregon Ducks that are – Definitely subscribe, and we'll probably be watching later today considering they're about four hours behind us here over on the East Coast. Uh, Thank you all so much for watching. And all of you guys that are watching live or have tuned in or watching this later, thank you so much. Uh, We we have reached over 500 subscribers, guys, and that is because of people like you, and we are super, super excited about that. Um, We're going to be able to take super chats here pretty soon. That's cool. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at maybe making some membership options for you guys. Um, and we're, we're going to do our best to be creative and come up with some fun, uh, ideas and, and we're open to your suggestions as well in the comment section. Um, and and as always spread the word, uh, Mason, you got anything else to close out the show today? No, I think that's it. Um, I will say since I didn't talk about Dylan Gabriel, I do think that he's a, a better quarterback than Bo Nix and is poised to have a really good year. I think that um, I think we're going to see if he has a similar effect, a similar come up that Bo Nix had. Um, this is a Heisman contender for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sky's the limit for the Oregon Ducks. And I'm a big Dan Landing believer. Um, I think he will make better decisions this year uh, as a coach. He will grow and uh, I think uh, Oregon is a force to be reckoned with as they enter the Big Ten.